Hello. So welcome to this uh, Tools in Action section, session. I will try to show as little slides as possible and to make it all a demo, which will, of course, fail because this is a conference, so I hope you don't mind. Um, today, I want to piece together an entire application that does streaming data uh, at a high rate, but I don't want to be bothering with uh, launching machines or monitoring them or, what, or whatever. I want to do everything in a serverless environment. So I will be using various components for Google Cloud, from Google Cloud Platform to run this. Uh, the business case, imagine you have a taxi business and you got, you got these uh, little panels installed in the, in the backs of your taxis. They are useful for your customers. They display where the taxi is so they can sh follow, follow the ride. And from time to time, you allow yourself to display a little ad because monetization is good. But you need an infrastructure to handle all this data. Your taxis, they are equipped with a connected GPS receiver. They send you all their data points in real time, let's say every two seconds. You receive from your taxis uh, the position, the number of passengers, the, the taxi meter, and also information about uh, the ads that are displayed and if the user has click, clicked on them. And one of your customers calls and says, I'm not seeing my ads, what's going on? And you call your data scientist to investigate. So how can he do that? This data stream first is pushed into PubSub. PubSub is uh, the first element here. And let me make this slightly bigger. <coughs> so I, I'm showing you, rather than showing you slides, I'm showing you uh, what this looks like in the Google Cloud Platform console. PubSub is a messaging service, fully managed messaging service uh, that uh, you can write uh, messages to it and uh, you write messages into topics and then clients can subscribe to topics and pull the messages out of it. Uh, so it does queuing for you, basically. It will accumulate backlog if, there, if you are not pulling the messages fast enough, but also it does fan out. You can have one topic and have multiple subscribers, uh, as well as fan in. You can have one topic and have multiple writers into that topic. Here, all my taxis are sending the data directly into PubSub. Uh, as soon as they have an HTTP connection, it's REST API, boom, they send the data into PubSub. So I have my data in PubSub. How do I debug it? It's a data stream, it's live data, it's coming in real time. I need something to visualize it. So I will use Google Maps for that, but the problem is that this is a high rate data stream. Um, I'm, I'm, I will be receiving something along the, the lines of 10,000 events per second. And uh, if I just throw this into a maps visualization, which is in my browser, uh, well, I make my little laptop here a part of my big data system that's not going to work. So I need to aggregate the stream uh, into a format that is more amenable to visualization. For that, I will use Cloud Dataflow. Dataflow here. So for people who were in the we, we just did a, a, a lab on Cloud Dataflow. Cloud Dataflow, rather than showing you the interface, let me show you the code, because uh, we are developers. We like seeing code. Uh, without reading this extensively, Dataflow understands Java. Uh, you are writing your code in Java, and uh, Dataflow is, is uh, the successor after 10 years of R&D, to MapReduce, which was published, the MapReduce paper was published in 2004. We are oh, 12, 13 years later now. <laughs> but the idea is still the same. You, if, you, uh, if you write your algorithm in a, uh, in a programming model that has these map and reduce steps, uh, well, it's slightly different in Dataflow, uh, slightly more generic, but it's the same idea. If you write your algorithm in that programming model, 
then Dataflow can parallelize this workload automatically. Can automatically, without you doing anything, send this workload, spread it across 20 or 100 machines. And what is new in Dataflow, compared to all the previous incarnations of the same idea, is that it's not just one map and one reuse operation, it can be a comp an arbitrarily complex graph. And the second thing is that Dataflow now does both batch and stream processing. So here I can do stream processing, and actually the code you're seeing here is that this. I'm reading my stream from PubSub, and then I do various operations to downsample it, which you can see here. There is a downsampling operation here. What you are seeing in this UI is the logical view of the pipeline you wrote. It's still your Java. We have optimized it and sent it across 100 different machines. And this is a non-trivial operation. All those machines are specialized. They, they, they run different parts of this pipeline but you wouldn't recognize your algorithm if, if we showed you that. So in the console here, we are showing you the way the pipeline, the way you wrote it, so that you recognize it. All right, so now I have my, let me see if I have a visualization. Okay, what I did in my pipeline, I downsampled my stream, and at the end, I'm writing it to PubSub again, and I configured this little uh, JavaScript app to pull from this PubSub topic. PubSub has a REST API, I can call it from JavaScript. I pull it and visualize it in a Google Maps API, uh, heat map API. And now I see taxes. And now I see the light. This is the business owner that was, that was complaining that he was not seeing his ads in his taxes. And this is where the taxes are which are carrying this ad. Well, uh, there are a couple around his store, but most of them are in South Manhattan. Obviously, there has been some misconfiguration. So now I see it. Okay, I can configure it better. And uh, the result will be something like this. Uh, the, the, the correct behavior that I expect. Let me put the store back on <coughs> here. That's correct. So. But then I, th I think, well, I have my, my ad server, which I configure manually. Uh, my, uh, my salespeople, they know where to place these ads uh, in the taxis so that they are relevant to the businesses who are advertising. Fine. But it's, it's error prone. They can do a fat finger mistake, configure it for a wrong area. It's not very good. What is my first line on the, of defense? Well, first, I want to log everything because here I spotted a problem in real time. But I want to have all of this information on disk somewhere so that I can browse through it to find where the problem was even yesterday or the week before. And we have a tool for that, which is called BigQuery. And in BigQuery, let me make this bigger, uh, BigQuery is, um, data warehousing solution, I would say. Uh, but it's, again, uh, fully serverless. You just pour data into it. And the nice thing is that the data that is inside is, is not siloed. It's super easy to access. Actually, BigQuery has an API, which is just a box in which you type a query. And the, let, me, let me launch this query so that you see that this is in real time. Uh, and uh, whatever the, the size of the data in BigQuery, I have a guarantee that BigQuery will spin up enough compute resources to get me my answer on my data in a relatively interactive time. So here in 19 seconds, it went through almost three terabytes of data, which are all the logs saved uh, from this application. and. What, what, what was I trying to see? I was tr trying to answer a business question for my business. I was trying to say, well, people are configuring those ads by hand. That's good. But wouldn't there be rules that I can find for making this configuration automatic? 
So let's try to sift through the data to find you know, some insights about my business and, and, and write those rules. And one hunch I had was that for my store, maybe a lot of customers are coming from airports. And maybe I should do a campaign specifically for travelers coming from airports. So I wanted to see how many people drive in a taxi past my store coming from an airport. Uh, the, the SQL query is, well, non-trivial. Um, and I run it on my entire saved uh, data set of, of logs from taxis. And I find that it's 8%. Well, maybe it's worth it, maybe it's not. That's one approach I can have. Let me show you the code of how I saved this data into BigQuery. I do that in my data flow pipeline. So it's right here. You see, I read from PubSub. On this side of the pipeline, I downsample and then blah, 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 I do something else. But immediately, and that's a really a best practice, whatever you do, whatever processing you do in data flow, have a, a, an operation that just saves the entire stream to disk in BigQuery. BigQuery can ingest up to 100,000 rows per second, so that should be okay. Here I have, what, 10,000 elements per second, yeah? Uh, and, and this is a very simple way in which I can persist my data and still have it live um, and, and accessible. In the code itself, this is the code that does it. Data stream.apply, BigQuery IO write. And I say that I create the table if it's not there, yet I uh, specify the schema. My schema is up there. This is it, this is just each field and, 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 and uh, what type it was. Uh, what else do I say? Append, I say I'm appending, and I say to which table I'm writing here. And that's it. Uh, let me show you a little other demo in BigQuery. I want to run this one. Uh, this is really just for fun. Uh, I'm running here a query which will retrieve the latest data points that BigQuery has ingested. And all of that is running right now. I'm not showing you any fake slides or anything. All of this is running. Uh, of course, I'm not getting the information from real taxis, unfortunately. Uh, I have a machine that is pumping this data into, into, uh, into PubSub. But uh, the data is realistic because it's a data set that is based on historical data. So. If you want to know, what you will be seeing on screen is a replay of taxi traffic in New York from the first week of January 2015. So, my query is almost finished. What I'm querying here is just the latest pieces of data. I want to know, the, it's like a tail command on, on, a, on, on a log file. It's almost there, 59 seconds, 60. Mm. Should be quicker. But, uh, so let, let's leave it running. Okay, we'll come, to, we'll, we'll come back to this later. Maybe we'll, it will take two minutes, but I, I don't want to go that far. So now I have, let me stop this. And let me go back to the full visualization. Oops. Okay. So now I'm visualizing my real business. And um, I had initially my ad server manually configured. Then I thought, well, maybe I should, um, uh, I should replace it with something with rules so that uh, I don't have to manually configure it. But um, now I'm thinking, there is this new thing, machine learning. Wouldn't that be useful? What if, instead of outputting my rules myself, I could take all my data and uh, train a model to predict the best ad to show uh, at any given location? Do I have the information to do that? Well, actually, I do. Because I have, in my logs, I have the position of the car, the time of the day, where it was coming from, where it was going. And I have which ad was displayed, and I have one little additional information if the user clicked 
on the ad. And when he, when he clicks, it gives him additional information. That's a user interaction. That's all I'm interested in. I know that what I showed to the user proved useful. For example, he was going to South Manhattan, and while, while driving past uh, Broadway, uh, I showed him that, uh, by the way, this is Broadway, and this is what is playing tonight. And he said, oh, yeah, maybe. Well, you have tickets. It was useful in, 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 that, in that situation. So how do I do that? And uh, let me go back to my architecture slide, this one here. So initially, I had my taxi data into PubSub. I used Dataflow to visualize it. I persisted it into BigQuery. Now I have all this data in BigQuery. I would like to train a model on it. But first, so this will be the, the full architecture. But first, data is usually messy. And, yep, this one. We have a new tool in Cloud Platform, which is called Data Prep. Again, let me make this bigger. Unsupported zoom level, come on. And edit the recipe. Most of the time of a data scientist is spent cleaning data. And even more is spent finding out that data is not clean. So this new tool, which is a collaboration between uh, Google Cloud Platform and Trifecta, is uh, the Trifecta tool deployed on Cloud Platform. What I did here is pointed at my BigQuery data, just pointed at the table. So the table has four terabytes of data. It doesn't care. It samples the data and shows me a view of the data with these histograms showing how much, how the data is, uh, is uh, how the data looks. And for instance, here on passenger count, I have this histogram, and it's telling me, oh, passenger count of 10, there is a significant number of taxis carrying 10 passengers. No, I don't think this is right. This is probably a fat finger mistake for one passenger. I don't think it's right. Let us fix it. So I will replace this with something else. It auto when I click on the column, it automatically suggests a couple of things to do. Uh, it suggested to replace this value with null. That's not exactly what I want. I think this was a fat finger mistake for one. So I replace it with one, and I add this to my script. This is just a UI. It's an interface that allows me to produce a data cleaning script. But, the, but in a way, in an interactive way, where you see the data, uh, you have suggestions of, on, on how to fix the data. And once my script here is finished, I will click Run Job, and this will run uh, this uh, data cleaning job on my entire table, produce a different table, and it will run it on Dataflow, but automatically. I don't have to write the Dataflow pipeline. It will automatically convert this script into a Dataflow pipeline and apply it. What else can I change here? Well, I have pickup location and destination location. Uh, they are compound columns, uh, latitude, comma, longitude. I don't like that. I don't like that. I would like a proper latitude and longitude column. So usually it suggests to, well, I will take something else. No, I don't want count. I want split. Okay, split. No, I don't want group by. Come on. Ah, I clicked something wrong. Sorry. I told you that this would not work immediately. Uh, I don't want suggestions. Let's go back here. Here. No. Where was the new one? Set. Uh, all right. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm confused in my own demo. I told you that something would not go well. But well, there is a split function where I can split this column in two on the comma and have two proper columns. I run this, and now I have my data that is clean. I can start training on this data. So 
I will use TensorFlow to build my model and ML Engine to train the data. Uh, ML Engine is, um, has two functions here. ML Engine is, uh, is uh, again, a serverless platform. Uh, uh, it is a TensorFlow, a, a platform designed to, uh, to, uh, to run TensorFlow jobs. So once I write my model, I run it on TensorFlow, uh, I run it on ML Engine for training. The, 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 the added value, you, I could also spin up an instance on GCP, uh, add a GPU to it, and train it on that. That works perfectly well. But usually as a data scientist, I like to tinker with my parameters a lot until the model is good. And uh, ML Engine has uh, this uh, very, very, very uh, useful hyperparameter tuning uh, function where you can define your model, leave some parameters open, and tell ML Engine to try various combinations of parameters to, to see what works best. So that's what I did. I trained my model on ML Engine. Let me show you what ML Engine looks like. So for instance, from here. I can go back to my console. Did this one finish? Oh, yes. So the, the query I was trying to show you previously uh, finished in uh, something like two minutes. It parsed five terabytes of data. And what I wanted to show you is here the lag. So that, in my query, I'm outputting the difference between uh, when the data was retrieved and when the data was ingested. And it's still being ingested as we speak. This demo is running. And you see the lag is, is sub-second, which I found quite extraordinary. That's the lag between a piece of data being ingested and a piece of data being visible in a user query. So back to uh, my cloud console. Here, and let me go to ML Engine. So ML Engine has training jobs. Here I, I see all my training jobs. But once a, job, a training job is done, my TensorFlow model will have saved uh, the trained parameters to disk. And I want to show you how I deploy a new model online. Uh, in this model, I simply, simply click on Create Version, and I go to Browse, and here I go to the file where the trained parameters of my model have been, have been saved. I click Deploy, and I have my model deployed online behind the REST API on a fully serverless, auto-scaled infrastructure. All I have to do now is send traffic to it. So that's what I will do. From my Dataflow pipeline, I will be calling my model and asking for, well, what the model predicts, which is the best ad to show at this point in time, space, and so on. So let me go back to my Dataflow pipeline. I'm reading from PubSub, saving to persist everything as it is, then downsampling for the visualization, and also because it's, uh, it's no good calling this, uh, this model every two seconds. Then on this side, I format it for the visualization. On this side, I downsample a little bit more, and I do my ML engine call which is, uh, since it's just a REST API, it's in my Dataflow code, in my, Java co in my Java code, I call this REST endpoint. And now I should be able to show you what it looks like right here. So let's say that, uh, what, I, what have I here? So here I'm showing, I picked one taxi, and I'm showing you uh, where the this taxi is going, how many passengers, and so on. And uh, it's carrying this ad, and it has been predicted because this passenger is going to LaGuardia Airport. It has one, pas uh, one passenger. So maybe the executive wine bar is something that he might find useful. Uh, and now something else. This taxi, same destination, but three people. And for three people, the algorithm thinks that maybe a sushi bar is, is a little bit more useful. And so this is what it looks like for all taxis, where they are going. There are some going to South Manhattan, so Manhattan breakfast maybe is something they like. And let me go back to the full architecture. 
And here we have the entire application. Entire ad serving application built with a, well, I think we can call it an IoT front end because those cars are sending data from, from the field, ingested in PubSub, uh, processed in Dataflow, persisted in BigQuery, uh, then I trained my model in, uh, in ML Engine, I deployed it on, on ML Engine, and everything that is in production here is a serverless component. And I want you to show you this, to show you that you can build a full end-to-end -end data stream, real-time uh, processing application using only real-time components, uh, because I don't like managing instances. That's it, thank you. And we have four minutes for questions. Yes? Yes, uh, good question. How did I train the model? So first, let me show you what model it was. Uh, I think I have a slide on it. Yes, it was a, a model called Wide and Deep. Why can I train it? Because in my data, I have all the ads that have been served, and I have user interaction. I have user engagement data. Okay, I have the fact that someone clicked on an ad. So I know when an ad is roughly useful. And then I used this wide and deep model. Uh, we, it's open source in TensorFlow. In TensorFlow, you can instantiate it in just one function call. Actually, I think I have this function call somewhere here. ML model wide, what is it? Wide columns, no. Yeah, here it is. Yep. Here, a DNN linear combined classifier. So I'm not writing my own model. I just instantiated this one. Uh, it's, I think you can call it the, the workhorse of, of most uh, enterprise ML problems. Uh, it's the model we use in the Play Store to predict which applications you're going to like. And it's a jointly trained model between uh, what is called a wide model, so something that learns a lot of combinations, uh, just point-by-point -point combinations that someone who is into, I don't know, uh, war games might like this specific game because now it's doing well in war games. And also a, a dense model that produces what is called embeddings, so that is a vector representation of a game in a space where, ga where vectors that are close represent games that are close in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in interest, in people's interest. And this gives you kind of the best of both worlds because sometimes you want to give to learn exactly what people want and sometimes you want to get a little bit outside of their zone of comfort because they want to, to, to find something new but you still need this information about proximity. And, well, there is a whole blog post about it and a scientific article that explains how to train those in, in, in together uh, and, and obtain something that works quite well. Um, I used it here as a black box. I just specified the inputs, trained it, some hyperparameters, used it as a black box, and it seems to be working okay in this case. Another question? No? One minute and 30 seconds for a question. No, it was all clear. All right, yes, one more question there. How does it test the to test it. What do you mean to test? What exactly do you mean to test? So, yeah. Um, so there is a lot to say about testing here. Maybe there is one point that I want to tell you about testing, and that is about data flow. So what you, what you were seeing, not here because this is Python code for my model, but here, my, my data flow code, this one, I send it to the online data flow service for execution. But this is just Java, okay? And the, what, is, what I like very much about Dataflow is that by changing one parameter, I can execute it locally instead of executing this uh, on this uh, optimized Dataflow uh, serverless infrastructure. And when I execute it locally, 
Of course, I will have to take care of my inputs and my outputs. Uh, if it is, if I'm doing batch processing, that means that I will reading, I will be reading from some local file, or even remote, but usually a smaller file. And if I'm doing stream processing, I will have to configure a stream specially for debugging. Apart from that, I can debug locally in my Java ID, put breakpoints everywhere, and make sure that everything works correctly. And that's something that I find really very, very useful in Dataflow. Thank you for attending.